I usually avoid talking about alien life on this channel. One of the main reasons I'm even here in the first place is to show that space doesn't need to have aliens to be interesting. Plus, alien life is clickbaited to no end on YouTube, with thousands of videos uploaded about it every day. But this doesn't change the fact that many people find alien life interesting, myself included. And the moon is just completely overlooked when talking about life. We usually skip straight to Mars, with its past of having oceans and still having small amounts of liquid water today, or Venus with its temperate upper atmosphere, or the subsurface oceans of every major solid body in the solar system past series. When talking about alien life, the moon is usually one of the last places people think of. The moon is, obviously, uninhabitable. No atmosphere, no liquid water, it's everything that makes Mars uninhabitable and made even worse. But the moon has a unique opportunity of being right next to Earth, which has a biosphere so expansive it's hard to not find life on it. So, things are different in this case. In fact, the reason I'm making this video is because the moon is the only object we know of where we can give an answer other than maybe or we don't know for the question of if there's life on it. Before I talk about how the moon could currently have life, we should see if it was ever capable of hosting it in the past. The moon might have not always been an airless rock. Some studies have suggested that the moon 3.5 billion years ago had a dense atmosphere thicker than the one Mars has today. This is unconfirmed, but if it did, this opens up the possibility of liquid water existing on the surface of the moon. If it existed, this atmosphere is likely made of sulfur, water vapor, and carbon monoxide. Not exactly a habitable combination, but it may have allowed liquid water to exist on the surface of the moon. This atmosphere only existed because the moon was very volcanically active at the time. The lunar maria, the dark patches on the moon, were formed around this time, so vast parts of the moon were covered in lava. But most of the maria had cooled down by this time, so the moon wasn't entirely covered in molten rock. There were places that could have supported lakes on the moon. The amount of water the moon had at this time is, from what I can tell, unknown, but estimates have ranged from only a few small ponds and deep craters to entire oceans kilometers deep. But given the fact that we don't see evidence of water erosion on the lunar surface, I would assume that if the moon did have bodies of water, they were small and isolated. To make things worse, this atmosphere, if it existed, didn't last long. It only lasted for about 70 million years before lunar volcanism died down and it escaped into space. With all this in mind, life would have an extremely difficult time surviving and thriving on the moon. Limited spaces for it to live, a harsh atmosphere, and a very short time span to evolve. But just because life probably didn't form on the moon, doesn't mean it wasn't present there. As I said earlier, the moon is right next to Earth. This opens up the possibility for panspermia. Panspermia is a process where life from one planet somehow gets to another planet and starts colonizing it. This is usually used when talking about life like bacteria, not intelligent civilizations colonizing space. Panspermia is very unlikely to occur, with how far away other planets are. But Earth and the Moon are much closer to one another than other planets. And, 3.5 billion years ago, they are much closer than they are now. The Moon at this time was somewhere around 300,000 kilometers away from Earth, far closer than the 384,000 kilometers it is today, and much, much closer than the 220 million kilometers of Mars. This makes panspermia much easier, but still incredibly unlikely. First off, for any bacteria to get on the Moon, it would have to survive the trip. The only way for this to happen is an asteroid impact, where a fragment of Earth containing bacteria is launched into space on a collision course with the Moon. This fragment has to be big, not only to shield the bacteria inside from space, but also to survive burning up in the lunar atmosphere that could have been present at this time. Then, the bacteria have to be lucky enough to not only not burn up or die on impact, but land close enough to a lunar lake, if they even existed at the time, to start reproducing. And, as I explained earlier, lakes on the Moon are probably rare, if not non-existent. A lot of things have to go right to get living bacteria to the moon, and 70 million years isn't a very long window to have it happen, but it is possible. If we get very lucky, and a large asteroid happens to hit Earth, a chunk of rock with bacteria on it is launched into space at exactly the right angle to reach the moon, it's big enough to not burn up and to shield the bacteria from space and impact with the moon, and it lands near enough to a water source, the moon very well could have hosted life during this time. But this life wouldn't have lasted long. The moon's water eventually dried up and was lost to space as the atmosphere vanished. Some estimates have suggested that the remaining ice on the moon could be as little as just 0.1% of the water that existed on the moon when it had a thick atmosphere. This means that over 99% of the lunar water might have been lost, and so any extremely lucky bacteria probably died along with the rest of the moon, as volcanism slowly decreased into non-existence. At this point, any chance of past life still existing on the moon is slim, to say the least. Maybe some bacteria somehow managed to escape underground into lunar aquifers, but that's unlikely. It's safe to say that, if Earth life ever somehow got to the moon, all of it is dead. 3.5 billion years is a long time to not have any access to liquid water. But even that might not be the end for life on the moon. Humans have landed ourselves and our machines on the moon dozens of times, but we weren't the only life to reach the moon on these missions. 
China's Chang'e 4 mission from 2019 carried a lunar microenvironment with it and landed everything from bacteria to silkworms, fruit flies, yeast, potatoes, and cotton seeds, and a lot more. Israel's Beresheet lander crash landed on the moon also in 2019, spilling over 1,000 tardigrades onto the lunar surface. Human-caused panspermia has been happening to the moon for decades now, and the amount of life on the moon has relatively exploded. Of course, everything on the moon not in pressurized containers is almost certainly dead. Tardigrades can survive on the lunar surface, but they can only survive by going into a dormant state. They can't reproduce or move or anything. The Beresheet tardigrades still have a chance of being alive on the moon today, but it's not like they're reproducing or eating ice on the South Pole. The moon's biosphere, if you can even call it that, consists entirely of a bunch of dead bacteria, hibernating tardigrades, the isolated lunar microecosystem on Chang'e 4, and several bags of human waste discarded during the Apollo missions. It's not much, but there is probably some life, in some capacity, alive on the moon today. But this sucks. Life on the moon isn't actually doing anything interesting. It's all dead, in a state of hibernation, or in an isolated, pressurized environment. The moon has certainly had life in the past, and there is a good chance that there is still life alive on it today, and things have been born on the moon. Cells in the human body and all organisms divide and reproduce all the time, so life has been born here. But to call the moon a living world because of a few isolated scraps of life is a stretch. So now I want to see how far we can make this biosphere go. Obviously, when we begin colonizing the moon, that will immediately turn the moon to a much more lively place, but we can do better than that. Both the United States and China are preparing to send humans back to the moon before 2030 and establish permanent bases there. Once this happens, the development of life on the moon will really kick off. Our lunar bases will provide the only places on the moon where life will be able to survive, and as they expand, so will the amount of life present. We can imagine things like moss or bacteria growing in the pipelines on the South Pole transporting water to the colonies, or plants in lunar farms if there will be any. This life will be entirely dependent on human activity, because there simply is no other place on the moon where life could survive. But once life is on the moon, that's when evolution will start to happen. The moon is, obviously, an entirely different environment than Earth. Even in lunar colonies where we control nearly everything about the environment, there are still things we won't be able to change, like the gravity or the moon's day-night cycle. These are unique evolutionary pressures not found on Earth, and could drive the creation of new lunar variants of life. What this could look like is another question, but life adapting to the moon is completely on the table. In the near future, we can't really expect much for lunar evolution. Evolution is slow. Lunar colonies will be the perfect place for life to thrive early on, but what about the long-term future? Could life evolve to survive on the moon as it currently is today? No matter how far in the future we could go, life will always be somewhat dependent on human activity. You could imagine a moon colony acting similar to how a hydrothermal vent does today. A perfect place for life to get energy where there's nothing else as an option, and so lunar bases could become the epicenter of a lunar biosphere, with life getting less common the further away you get from a human presence. Genetic engineering is also not off the table, as if humans want a long-term sustainable presence on the moon, we're going to need life particularly suited to live solely on the moon. Things like plants being able to grow in regolith, for example. This is, obviously, incredibly speculative. But I think there is a possibility for a lunar biosphere to start to take shape once humans begin colonizing the moon, thanks to a mix of natural evolution and genetic engineering. Lunar life could have an explosion once we seriously begin colonizing the moon. Explosion, of course, being a relative term, as the moon will likely never have anywhere close to the diversity and complexity as life on Earth. But an explosion compared to what's already there. How exactly this life could look is anyone's guess. It could be like what I've suggested, with lunar bases forming the centers of small, isolated pockets of life, with a few extremophile bacteria species scattered across the rest of the moon, or it could be something different entirely. The main takeaway I wanted to get across with this video is that the moon has the potential to be a living place. It doesn't always have to be dead and desolate as it's portrayed in sci-fi. The moon is the most important object for humanity beyond Earth, excluding the sun, of course. Colonizing the moon would not only bring enormous benefits to humanity, as I explained in other videos, but we could also be able to bring life to this dead rock once and for all. So, to answer the question in the title of this video, yes, the moon does have life. But we're the ones who have brought it there, and we're now in the process of very slowly turning a dead world into a living one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.